Hi, so I thought I would go through my process of digital painting. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the shortcuts that I usually use. Obviously there's the B and the E for the brush and the eraser, and I also have a tablet pen so I can just turn my tablet pen around. Um, the other thing I find really useful is that to go backwards I use Control Z, but I don't just do it once, I can go back as many times as I want. So to do that, it's uh, keyboard shortcuts, and then edit, and then for step backwards, you just click on it, and then you change it to Control Z. And then I believe if you go into the edit preferences, um, let's see here. Performance history states 542, so I can go back 542 steps before it doesn't let me go back anymore. So I find that really useful. And so I I like to use a few layers. Um, I don't go crazy. I like to stick it to probably less than five, depending on things. And so today I've decided to paint this kangaroo and her baby don't usually paint marsupials, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first of all I'd like to talk, these are the regular brushes. Um, my computer's been weird and so it's not showing the pressure sensitivity, but I assure you it has it. Um, I use the, I usually use the regular brushes, especially this one because I like how controlling, how much control you have over it. And if you watch, you'll usually see me, um, I usually change this to off to pen pressure to have more control. I also like to have this up. So this is the Wacom tablet properties, as you can see. And depending on whether or not I want more color, then I change it to soft. If I want easier blending, um, so say I've got all the basic colors in there and I just want to smooth everything out, I usually set it firmer so that I can have more control. Okay, so to start with, G to get the paint bucket tool. Fill it to a pretty neutral color. Um, I like to work on medium gray. That way my my lights and my darks are well balanced. Because if you have it on white, um, your picture looks really dark. Um, because of the high contrast between the background and the colors you're using. And I don't like to have it too dark because then it appears really light. So that's what I like. Um, I usually like to have... To do my, I do an initial sketch, which you'll watch me do. It's very quick, and I usually like a darker color. Um, I try not to go for like these colors because I find I get too distracted, and so I do that. B to get my brush back, make it smaller. So this is just the the regular line brush. Okay, so. When when you get a picture or say you're drawing from life, the first thing you want to do is get the form. Um, the details don't matter. So you'll see me here and I'm looking at this and I see, okay, that's, that's a triangle there. Comes down about there. There's the nose. Um, it's all about proportions at this point. You know, details don't matter. Eyes there ears, ears are pretty big. I don't think they're that big. But you see the distance between here is only small. So you can use all these vantage points to help you. Okay, so there's its head. And then okay, so you look down, you see the neck connects here. So that's about here. a little bulge there but that's about the extent of the neck 
and then here we have the shoulders. Turned the eraser tool. I want to get rid of that so I don't get confused. Okay, so here's the shoulders now. I usually draw it like this, like a triangle, because I know the scapula, I think that's what it's called, is shaped like this. And then you have the forearm, like that. So that's why I do it like that. And also, as you can see, Control N, new layer. Okay, you can see it's a triangle. You can see that shape there. All right. Okay, so I can see the light comes back to here and then it goes down the leg supporting weight so I want it to be straight and I don't know about how long it's going to be yet because I still need to make it work with the rest but I think it will be about here alright so then I bring it up and over. I try to keep it one animal at a time so I can get this sorted out and then the joey will be next. Um, I'm looking at this and I see that this is a lot smaller than this so I've done something wrong. So I think what I did wrong is I should have had the shoulder closer so that this would come up like this instead. So a razor tool. Don't be afraid to rub out, you know? I, for the longest time, I did not want to rub out, you know? I've spent all this hard work on this drawing and to just erase it away. What if it's not as good as when I last did it, you know? But you gotta let go of that fear because you could make it better. You know, I mean, if you're afraid to erase it, then it's not going to be better. But it could be better if you just, you just try. Okay, so that looks about right. Still a little off, but I can always fix it later. These legs are too thick. Okay, so. Kangaroo legs are huge. Man. So. Needs to come under him more. So, as you can see, I work really fast in the initial sketch. Um, it makes it so much easier. You know, um, you'll also see me doing this because. I'm searching for how far away things are, and so I do that to be able to judge the distance. Okay, and I think is this too wide? I'll leave it for now. I'll figure it out later. It's a shame this tail has just cropped out of the picture. Got all this grass hiding all this feet. Don't know if I'm gonna draw the feet. I don't really have any reference of kangaroo feet. Okay. Look at this cute little baby. Jeez. Okay, so as you can see, details, details don't mean anything to me at this point. 
don't even matter. What matters is you get the proportions right. You know, I mean, unless the proportions are right, then the drawing can't move forward. So, I have this. Extend that. See if we can try and complete the tail. Okay, so then, so now you have the basic shape. And I still think this is too much, so I'm gonna just cut it off a bit. Okay, razor tool, raise that. I think it needs to come down further for the pouch. Okay. So you're constantly looking, constantly comparing, you know, like, you don't look at your drawing more than you look at the reference. The reference is your whole thing. It's your lifeline, okay? Alright, I think that's pretty good. Um, I don't like how this back is arching. I think it comes up further. Raise this so I don't get confused. Okay. <coughs> so, depending on the complexity of the creature, I either leave this and then start blocking in the colors, or I'll do. Or I'll do a second sketch to make sure I understand the details, where things go, how things are laid out, how the eyes are shaped, the nose. Um, I think I'm going to do the second sketch for the face only. Faces, sorry. Um, everything else is pretty simplistic, you know. I mean, everything else is just shapes. Um, the nice thing about this photograph is it's very well lit, so you can see where the, how the hair um, morphs onto the body, the directional strokes, you know, so that will really give you a hand. It also has some nice details in the leg here. You can see where the tendons come down. This big muscle area here. It's going to be really good. Now, yeah, let's hope I can draw it well. So, second sketch. New layer. Lower the opacity. Let's do that a bit more. Yeah, should be right. So as you can see, it's just a squiggly mess, and now it's time to see sense of all this scribbles. It's not that great of a photo in regards to resolution, um, which we should be able to make it work. I have a myriad of uh, references. So here you can see one eye, and I'm not really sure how much I want to do because it's dark. There is no, you know, there's no definition in that whatsoever. Um, you can see the eyelashes here, but there's no, there's no highlight, you know. Um, this is just me guessing at what the eye looks like, which for an artist is never... Especially if you want to do realism, guessing is definitely not the way to go. Okay, I can see it comes here. Okay. If you look over here, I can see the eyelid, so I know that there is a slight eyelid for them. Pretty much most animals have one. Have this kind of extra shelf, just like we do. I love these kind of noses, like big rabbits. Okay. They kind of remind me of llamas. With this. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see, you can see quite a bit of detail here. Line, line, line. You know, I mean, it's all, it's all the muzzle, muscles. You know, and it, and it adds detail. You know, it adds that realism. You know, and when it comes to drawing, don't draw what you think you see. Draw what you actually see. So put those in. It'll add realism to your paintings or your drawings, you know, and the way to get better is to see everything, everything you can, and the, the more you practice, the more you'll see, you know, so don't be like, oh, I don't see any of that stuff, because you will, it takes a godly amount of hours, so I'm looking at this, and I, I feel like this is something First of all, it's too wide, you know, I mean, if you look at this distance and this different distance, it's not right. And I think that's because I've made the mouth too big. And maybe the nose, I've made it too wide. So let's try... Push it in a bit. Let's try that and see how that goes. You know, and don't be afraid to tweak things, you know, and use the transform tool. Oh, I'm sorry, I should probably go over that. So you highlight the area, you press L to get your lasso tool and select the area and then control T for windows. And then here you can squish it. And if you press shift, it um, does it all, resol uh, not resolution, but changes everything, all sides all at once, so it makes it square. All right, now you would tick or hit enter, but I want to get that back to where it was. So I press the thing and then control D. D highlights it. B for the brush. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I see, okay, if we were to draw a line there, that's where it would stop. So I can just draw that there, like so. You know, I mean, use these reference points, you know. They will make your life a lot easier if you relate things to everything. And then I see it just comes slightly down. Let's make that jaw smaller. Okay, let's, let's move on from that and we'll sort it out later. You know, I don't, I don't like to be stuck on the same thing. Because you might find that you'll never... You'll never fix it. I find without the other eye, it's going to be damn hard. So the trick about placing eyes is that they always line up with the nose and the ears. So. Always. You know? They always line up. So use that, you know, like draw a line on your on your page. That way you know if you know the eyes right, then you know where to put the ears. Now, I know for things with mobile ears, obviously their ears stay the same, but where their sockets here. So it can't be said for that one because it's on the side. But they always give you that general area, so you know where to place your eyes. Okay, so this eye finishes where this ear begins. So I'll be about here. Okay. I also seem to hold my breath a lot while I draw. It's like serious anticipation. Okay. Uh, not too keen on that. Looks like a... He's hungover. But we'll fix that when it comes to the colouring. My face, so... We won't make them so obvious, you know, like, um, there's only a slight color shift between this, 
but between this, it's a lot more. So just because, you know, you're doing a more initial sketch, don't think it still has to be perfect. You know, I mean, you can change things all the way down the line. So, I know from experience, from looking at schools, that this comes down here. And then I know that this goes down like this. But from here, you wouldn't know that. You know, it doesn't show it very well. This thing looks creepy. Looks like something from Halloween. Okay, let's get these lovely ears. I think I drew them too big before, so I want to cut that down. Okay, and you can see there's a slight wave in them. And then when they come down, they go in just before. But then this is here. Okay, so as you can see, everything it's everything's r relying everything on its each other. You know what I mean? So, I see that this comes down here, here, this way is about the same distance. You know, everything is relative. Okay, get that in. You know, hair doesn't matter at this point. Um, it's just for me to have a mental note of hair is going to be placed there. You know, it's, it's longer than the rest of the ear hair. Okay, so I can see this is a V, so I want this to be a V, same kind of distance, and I'm going to, so this, this goes here, wave, and I think, there. And this goes all the way. You see where this has a slight, it's not all the way, like that. Okay. Let's just look at that. So once you take that away, all the scribbles, you can see we have a much more defined sketch. Um, you can see the underlying skeleton behind it. Here's the bridge of the nose. You know, from this, you can see, uh, you know, this comes out like this. You get that feeling of the build, the build of the form, you know? And that's, that's what our job is, you know? Building forms, putting it all together. So because I've changed this, I want to Make sure this is correct. Okay, so the neck will come out there. And then I also want to okay, build this here. And then this will be out like this. And then it's further down like that. See? Here I'm comparing this distance to this distance, you know? And I'm also looking, okay, so it goes in and out, in, out. Erase that so it's clearer. All right, everything, just keep doing that. Okay, so I think that's good. Um, there's no real details for the female kangaroo. Everything else is pretty basic, you know, like, you just have these forms. You can easily look from here, you know, and build it yourself when you're doing the colors. So, now it's time for the baby face. Look at that. Okay. You see? I hate it. If you zoom in too much, you get these, get this grid pattern. 
and it's a it's a guide of some sort and it drives me crazy so it's showing the pixel grid and I hate that oops look how weird it gets and then so to get rid of this control H but look how blurry this photo is definitely gonna have to buff this out but yeah so as you can see this this may be a little tricky to do because our my reference photo is not the greatest it's not too clear and to be honest I probably should have got into a smaller brush with my initial sketch so I laid it out better but we'll see what we can do um, I think I'm gonna start with the eye first so I can see where to place the rest okay I know this goes and you you also need to work you need to know your animal knowledge you know um, it's really important that if you have a good reference you, you know you know okay I know the skull is like this it's like a triangle it goes like this you know I mean you'll find it's like that for most herbivores cows sheep uh, pigs are a little different same basic shape but they have more joints kind of more diagonals in there horses it's big for horses you know so you can use this use this knowledge to get what you want control Z get rid of everything okay. the eye comes here but it's mostly hidden because it's on the side So here, I'm about here. So I know, okay, it comes down like this now. And then here's the nose. I know not to take the nose too far up because I know it lines up with the eye. And it comes down. And the tiniest little lip there. Okay. And this, I can see it comes out to the nostril. So the nostril. The chin doesn't go up to this second one, only this one. So I can see that, you know, this isn't straight, it's got a slight curve to it. Okay, ears, there's not so much. Um, with these ears, there's a large amount of stalk, I want to call it. Um, but these ones, look how rounded they are in compared to the female. You know, I mean, they're just big round ears. So, I can see that there. They also seem further further apart than the female. Maybe it's just the way they're lying. You'll notice me do this a lot. You know, I was working on the ear and then I looked over back at the reference picture and I'm like, mm, not happy with that eye got the itch to try and fix that and I don't know if it's just because it isn't colored yet you know you'll find that um, things don't look right if they're just drawn but once they're colored and they're, the eye is colored in the shape will make better sense to you you know quite happy with that though I'll fix that later alright I don't even know what that is. I'm guessing it's the the baby's arm. Um, I don't know if I want to include that or not. 
Ooh, and I forgot about this back leg. Three-legged kangaroo. I don't think it get very far with that. Okay, so now, where do I place this back leg? How do I know how far to do it? So, look at the chin, down to there, go back here. Um, you can see this, it comes down and gets straight. Straight, I'd probably put it higher, like this, but I'm sure my leg could do with some work. How far away it seems to hide behind there. Well, the grass is covering it. And then look, so it's about this way up. Good. So like that. Now let's see what we got. <laughs> she looks creepy. She'll be better when she's got some color in those eyes. But she looks freaky right now. Alright. Now, the not so fun part. I like drawing. Um, still working on my painting skills. So I find it often difficult to do. So, now I'm going to talk about what most of the artists hate to learn, hate the beginning to learn, is light. So, as you can see, the light is here. This is the main area of light. Uh, so you know where the light was coming from. You know it was coming from to the side behind. It's interesting that the tail is in light, is in uh, shadow, sorry, so thinking it was probably by some trees to hide that. Okay, so you can see the light comes here. Reflection, cast shadow, always good to add those. Cast shadow at the knee. Now let's look at the colors. So I got B, Alt, this, okay. So this is really very bright, you know, really bright, but let's look at these, so look at the shadows, the blues, you know, look how cool these lights are, and then how warm, no? desaturated, and this probably is the darkest, the darkest part of the photograph. So it's still, it's not black. You know, it looks really black, but it's not black, black. Slightly away from it. Alright, so to color, I'm going to keep both layers, new layer. And then go to this brush. So this is, I know it's hard to see without the, without the pen pressure on. So this is this brush. So here I have my brush preset right there so I can always have it. Go to the spacing, transfer. I want that off because so I want solid color right now. There's uh, no mixing yet. Go back. Okay, so my brush, history, clone tool, never use that, don't know why that's even there. Settings, oh, pull presets, tool presets, never use that. So I may as well get rid of that one right there. Okay. Alright, let's begin. So this is all color picking. I'll just do this. Obviously. I usually like to have like color pick one color 
and have that as a base to work on the rest. Yeah, that leg is definitely too long. You know, I don't care about being careful right now. I can always erase later. It doesn't matter at all. That Joey is so cute. So you see, when I do this, um, I'm not getting 100% color. That's because my opacity is at 72. Wow, this would help, wouldn't it? So, there we go. That's better. As you can see, I'm not careful at all. Not remotely. And I think... Oh, I'll leave it there. I was just wondering about moving the entire painting. There. Alright, let's do this. So let's zoom in. Brush size smaller. Wrong layer. Okay, let's start nose. As you can see, nothing is blending. That doesn't matter right now. I just want to get the color. You know, I'm not getting all the colors. Green nose. You'll be really surprised at some of the colors you get. You know, it, it, this kind of thing teaches you about variation. You know, and, and how good it is to have color variation. My brush is too big. Sometimes you just can't grab the color you want. It's frustrating. That does not look like that color. For some reason, this blue was really bugging me. I want to get that nice rich red orange color in there. Don't worry about it being messy at this point, you know, like we're gonna go back in. We're gonna fix this. Sometimes this can look pretty cool on its own.
and you can be as blocky as you want, you know, you can, I could have gone even smaller than this, but I didn't want to. Make the brush bigger. I didn't even notice that I turned off that sketch. You know, nothing needs to be accurate. Because, well, first of all, there's thousands upon thousands of colors in this one image. You're not going to get every single color on here. Just try and get good enough variation to get an idea of whether it's a shadow, um, what color the shadow is. You know, you need to need to know what general colors, a warm color, is a cool color. If there's a color I really like, like this, I don't even know what to call this, peachy gold color. You know, if you really like it, add it, get it in there. You know, I mean, look how much variation I'm getting. Really, you know, what I mean, it's a mess. You're not really, you know, you'll see later when it comes to blending about how everything works. But the main thing is to get all the colors down. And usually, this is how fast I usually work, um, everything's fast paced. You know, um, taking it slow causes you to think very small, and centralizes your, okay, so let's, let's look for a second about where the shadow is. So the top of it starts about where this baby's eye is. Sound like that, it's only small. And to be honest, what I could have done is I could have just laid down the regular female colors and then put an overlay over the top, but I don't seem to do that. I like it this way, so I know at the start where it is, but you can do either, you know. At the end of the day, it's it's not about the technique. You know, it's not about how you do it. It's about what you come up with. And it's about, you know, I mean, people, when you're doing this kind of work, you forget why you enjoy it. You know, you're so intent on getting the final image. You forget to just sit and enjoy the process. Look at these purples, it's like little lilacs, when I get them in there. I should be zoomed in to do that baby, but let's get the rest of the feet out done. I just looked at that color and I'm like, I don't even know where I got that from. There we go. Better. I feel like this back leg is going to cause me some problems. 
There's a lot of hair all going in different directions. And it adds visual interest. And this white is really, really blown out. I don't like that. Gonna have to lower it down. So that came from here. So green. Gonna have to mix those colors together to kind of get something lighter. But something around the same color. Okay. Okay, so I could say that this is dark for the rest of them, really. It's too short. So let's take a look at my reference folder. Here are some exercises that I do. If you have, you have seen. So, this is my reference folder on my computer, and there are a few hundred photos, um, some of them are artist work to see how they do things, so that's just, I'll show you some of the things I have. Um, what was really hard about this was that naming the folders, so as you see in the marine, I have sharks, fish, uh, nudie branches, rays, eels, tropical fish, jellyfish. This one's really, you know, throw it all in there. Or crabs, you know, anything kind of marine goes in this, but then, you know what I mean, elephant-like, got rhinos in there, so for this it's, it's like the skin, right, elephant-like skin, um, their legs are somewhat similar in design, I was about to say their ears are similar, couldn't get further from the truth. The steel of day. Um, fascinated by otters. Got my own ferret. Um, these have their own colors. Here I look at patterns, uh, skin textures, this kind of thing, you know, to make everything kind of more realistic if I'm doing something fantasy. Deer. So this is another thing, you know, it's labeled deer, but really it's more of an ungulate uh, folder. Uh, cattle, moose, Thompson's gazelles, wildebeest, tapirs, it's uh, goats, all things with hooves generally. Go in this one. I've really neglected well, not really, I guess. I've built it up quite a bit now. My feline folder. All kinds of cats in it. So, yeah, I mean, get one of these folders. You know, fill it. Spread it out. You know. Um, it's excellent, you know, when you're, you're bored one day and you're like, I don't know what to draw. 
you know, just pick a folder. I've got tons of doubles in here, gotta get rid of those. You know, I mean, if you look at nature, how fascinating it is. If you compare this woodpecker to the flamingo, to whatever the hell this is. You know, I mean, the nature, the natural world is incredible for its diversity. Alright, so let's get back to what we were doing. Marsupials. So you you got wombats, kangaroos, Tasmanian wolf. I love this guy. Look at that. He, he was fun to draw. Okay, so if we look at this, this should tell us the tail length. Oh, it's a joey. But okay, we can look. If we see this length is about equal to this length. So ah, we'll just leave it as that. But that's gonna bug me. Alright, uh, what are we up to? Baby Joey. With the uh, reference photos, I'm very selective about what I take for reference. Um, I usually only choose DeviantArt references that are under the reference folder because unless you ask the photographer if you can draw his picture you don't really have access to it. Um, I do have a few on there that came from the photography but not so I can draw them directly, more like I can use them to help me coin my own or help with another I'm doing so you see here um, I have this little orange part I like that you know it adds a little interest it's not seen anywhere else so I'll put that in there sorry I know this must get kind of boring a long process. <sighs> Those ears. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Alright. So I think I'm going to cut away now. So a razor brush. Again, nothing's exact. Um, doesn't need to be exact yet at all. But I need to be able to see the shapes. This is more for so I know what's relative information. What's irrelevant? Irrelevant, sorry. It's kind of yucky. Mustardy yellow. Looks gross. Oops. 
ratio. Increase the size. So that gives us a bit of an idea. If we look at what we started with. It's kind of hard to see what we have, but much better. All right. So now we have the sketch. We have second sketch to see more of the details. We have the basic colors in there, and now it's time to start doing details. Man, it's already at almost an hour. I'm going to do this video in two parts, I think, so that it's easier on my computer and it's easier on YouTube. So this is part one of painting a kangaroo. I'll finish off with having a look at what we got. So this is what we have, the basic shapes. And so, in the next video, we'll be detailing and tidying everything up, blending, painting the fur, putting in some ground in there. Should be fun stuff, right? Have a good day.